Yokal Lima Yankee One Fox Protect Three. Lima Yankee Number One Fox Protect Three. Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're going to talk about a piece of software called HS Modem or High Speed Modem. Now, primarily, HS Modem was designed with QO100 in mind. That's the geostationary amateur satellite tens of thousands of kilometers above Africa. The goal was to transfer images, text files, HTML web pages, files and speech digitized with two selectable codecs. Now, while this software was primarily designed for QO100, it can be used on any band, as long as you have at least 2.7 kilohertz of bandwidth and data modes are allowed. Data transmission speeds can be between 6,000 and 7,000 bits per second. Now, to show you a working example of this software, I will use a web SDR, which is tuned to the QO100 narrowband transponder. Luckily, there's an experimental beacon transmitting 24 seven at the top end of the allocated band. Of course, if you are in the footprint of QO100 and you have your own dish set up, then there would be no need for using a web SDR. You can just do it direct. I'm including this web SDR as a demonstration for those that either don't have a QO100 receive setup or are outside of the QO100 footprint around the world, as it means you can still try this software for yourself. Locating the signal is quite easy, and I will link below to this specific web SDR as it's quite good. Tune the VFO to the frequency shown here and make sure the bandwidth is at least 2.7 kilohertz. I make mine slightly larger and I'll show you why shortly. You're then going to need two other pieces of software. One will be virtual audio cable, which is a free download. And the second is the HS modem software itself. Just download the installer from the linked website and then run it. Assuming you have virtual audio cable installed, you now need to route your browser's sound output to the virtual audio cable. The easiest way to do this is to open your sound preferences and set your default audio playback device as virtual audio cable. You can now start the HS modem software and configure it to take the audio from the virtual audio cable. Once it's set up correctly, you should start seeing packets being decoded. Now on the bottom of HS modem, you'll notice two round indicators. If these are red, then something is not right and the data is not being decoded. Now this is where you first need to check your audio levels and then finally check the bandwidth and frequency setting of the web SDR or your receiver that you're using. If all is well, you will have a green indicator next to the RX signal and RX sync indicators. Also, make sure you have the correct speed selection selected, which is to the left of the RX sync indicator. Mine is set to 8 APSK with 2700 Hz and QO100 SDR. Now the experimental beacon on QO100 transmits an HDMI page with content and real-time data. The real-time data is streamed continuously, which we'll talk about in a moment. What will happen now is that each file is received, it will be stored locally on your computer. Each file is received as blocks, so if an error occurs while receiving a block, then you'll just need to wait for the next transmission to hopefully capture that block again, not the whole file, and luckily it's transmitted every couple of minutes. On the top right, we see an indication of what HS modem is receiving, and on the bottom left line, we see some specifics about the data being received. As well as a standalone Windows application, you can run the modem software on a Raspberry Pi, then use this GUI to connect to it. However, in this video, we're just looking at the Windows standalone application. Now, once the QO100info.html file has been fully received, this button here will be visible. Simply press it for a new web page to open on your computer, which will then load this HTML file. You should start to see lots of information populating in real time. Now, one thing to mention is that all of the information you see here on this web page has not come from the internet at all. All this information, including the live data feeds, are coming directly via QO100. There are six live feeds here, so let's take a look at the bottom two first. So here on the right, we have the AMSAT bulletins. There are 10 tabs which can hold one bulletin each. The highlighted tabs are the bulletins which have been received and are viewable. These populate as you receive more data. The left side of the bottom two is the QO100 Club News feed. However, these links do go off to internet pages. 
Now the middle two feeds are quite interesting. The left one is a fully working DX cluster, which you can even filter by band. The right side is a CW skimmer for any CW activity that happens on QA100. Now the top two feeds I find quite amazing. They are scope and waterfall of the narrow and wideband transponders on QA100. Of course, the refresh rate is quite slow, but certainly very usable to see activity live. Also, without saying you can't listen in with this, it's just a visual aid. So if you didn't want to use this to receive QA100 experimental data beacon, what can you use it for? Well, there is an option to send and receive images. This feature is also available to individuals on QA100, but I guess this would also work on VHF and UHF. On the file tab where we saw the QA100 data beacon, you can also set up your own beacon to transmit through your own radio. The voice and audio tab allows the user to have a two-way conversation using digital voice, very similar to 3DV where you use your computer's microphone and your computer's speakers. HS modem also has RITI built in, so again, another form of communication in this rather cool piece of software. Now I have wondered if this would work over HF, any of these modes that HS modem supports. Maybe that's something to try with someone at a later date. Let me know if you want to schedule a test and I can be available. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and hopefully this video hasn't made any of you buy anything, which I know some of you complain about after watching my videos. Take care.